Okay, we resume with the Genocide Roundtable, which uh, will be chaired by John Packer, Associate Professor of Law and Director of Human Rights Research and Education Center at the University of Ottawa, and former legal advisor to the first UN Special Rapporteur to Myanmar in 1992. And there will be Gianni Tonioni, Physician and General Secretary of the Permanent People's Tribunal Secretariat of Rome. And Penny Green, Professor of Law and Globalization and Director of International State Crime Initiative from Queen Mary University of London. And also Maung Zarni, um, Burmese activist and uh, scholar, and like he said earlier, enemy of the state who works also for the Genocide Documentation Center of Cambodia, the Sloy Greed Institute. Thank you for being here. And in the meanwhile, I will pass around a conference call. Please take a, a page and have a look at it. Thank you very much, and we continue. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, our time, uh, I know, is very short, and uh, there's so much I know uh, people want to say and, and want to exchange. Uh, so I'm going to, again, like others, take for granted that you have looked at the uh, excellent program and you see the bios uh, of the people on this roundtable, and we will just proceed right away now uh, to, have a dis uh, to hear from them and uh, hopefully have some exchange uh, from the floor. So our first speaker is Professor Tong Nguyen. Good uh, afternoon to... Uh, to everybody here. Uh, my presentation will be uh, simply, uh, the first part, uh, very briefly, will be to re recall what has been the role of the Permanent People Tribunals in this issue about uh, the uh, genocide uh, uh, responsibility for what happens in Myanmar, especially with uh, the different uh, group of people who were uh, requested to the tribunal to be assessed in terms of the violation for crimes of war, crimes uh, against humanity and a genocide, because the, after the opening session of the Permanent People Tribunal we had in London at the Queen's University, uh, we convened uh, very urgently because the uh, very rapidly progressive uh, uh, violation of fundamental rights of the peoples who were involved, the Rohingyas, the Kachin, and other mis uh, Muslim minorities. And the tribunal, according to his statute, uh, uh, named uh, a panel of uh, experts in uh, international law and uh, genocide to convene and to listen and to testimonies on one side to examine the big documentation which was available at that time in September of this year, so that uh, before uh, all the debates which then was uh, started uh, around the responsibility of what was happening in Myanmar, the Permanent People's Tribunal uh, pronounced a verdict. I mentioned briefly uh, what was the decision of the tribunal, saying that for the first time uh, the uh, situation was judged according to the classical terms of international law, the facts which were uh, denounced and testified. And the three uh, decisions uh, which were taken by the Permanent People Tribunal were three. The first one was uh, for the crimes uh, of war, and the first statement say, from the foregoing testimonies and documents submitted, the tribunal is of the view, beyond a reasonable doubt, that the state of Myanmar is guilty of war crimes perpetrated against the Kachin people. The approach of the tribunal was not, not simply to concentrate uh, only on what was going on on the Rohingyas, but on the Kachin and other Muslim minority. With respect to the crimes against uh, humanity, the, uh, second, the, the second uh, decision of the tribunal says that the, from the testimonies and documents submitted, the tribunal is of the view, beyond a reasonable doubt, that crimes against humanity were committed against the Rohingyas, other Muslim civilian populations in Myanmar, and the Kachin. And for what respected the crimes for genocide, uh, 
uh, the third uh, decision of the tribunal was that on the strength of the evidence presented, the tribunal reached the consensus ruling that the state of Myanmar has the intent to commit genocide against the Kachin people and the other Myanmar Muslim. Further, the state of Myanmar is guilty of the crime against uh, uh, of the crime of genocide against uh, sorry. against Rohingyas. Moreover, the genocide against the Rohingya is now taking place with ongoing uh, acts of genocide. There is a strong possibility that the number of casualties of that genocide will be even higher in the future if nothing is done to stop it. Regarding the other Myanmar Muslim and the Kachin, even if the implementation of genocide is not yet taking place, the tribunal hereby issues a clear alert that the continuation of the persecution together with the crimes against humanity and war crimes could amount to the implementation of the genocide in the near future. In order to uh, qualify this uh, uh, statement of so the tribunal, I think it's important to qualify also the role of the permanent people tribunal with respect to international law. That is important for what has been discussed this morning, what was going on uh, over the last uh, six months, because we are now the six months after the formal declaration of the attack on the Rohingyas, because it is important for, especially for the future, what has been said this morning, that the genocide, uh, the convention was the, for the prevention of genocide. And the first point is that the Permanent People's Tribunal was uh, in fact established many years back in 79 as an implementation of the Universal Declaration of the Right of People, which was uh, uh, decided uh, with the uh, evidence that uh, at that time, after what was happening in different parts of the world, the international law and the international community, which should be the guarantor of this international law independence, with respect to what was happening in the world, was in fact applying a systematic policy of impunity with respect with what was on, going on with respect to the massive violation of the people's right. The principles was that in fact, uh, if uh, the international law is becoming more and more dependent on the political equilibria, the uh, possibility of having an uh, independent judgment uh, from the state-controlled uh, international law was bound to be, in fact, ineffective and to leave aside uh, or marginalized uh, all what was happening to people who were not part uh, of the uh, powers of the international law. The international law was, uh, in fact, uh, called by the International Declaration of Rights of People to recognize that peoples are in fact the subject, the real subjects of uh, justice, not simply the object of international law, which leaves aside those who are in fact not recognized as representative of law. And in that sense, uh, the tribunal was involved in many cases which had more or less uh, the same situation which then we have been finding in Myanmar. Both what was happening in Argentina, in Timor, and then in the Armenian, and then in other situations, the Tamil and other people of the uh, situation, which was uh, in fact uh, uh, happening in the massive violation through economic uh, and political measures was in fact bound to be completely in impunity. In that sense, uh, the uh, tribunal uh, was uh, invited to take the issue also of the uh, facts happening in Myanmar to uh, clearly uh, classify those uh, crimes not simply as uh, something which uh, could be left uh, to the decision or the discussion which 
which uh, were, uh, in fact, uh, the protagonists of the last few months. What was happening in Myanmar was recognized uh, factually as something which was really incredible. The UN uh, reports and many uh, reports were discussing about ethnic cleansing. They were playing with words in order to avoid, in fact, uh, the recognition that uh, it was important to have an independent uh, judgment uh, which was not dependent on what was the decision of the United Nations Council of Security and all the veto which could be imposed uh, to the implementation. And uh, the uh, fact of uh, declaring genocide, as was clearly said this morning in the first uh, presentation here, is that the interpretation of the names uh, which are given to tell the truth uh, to what is happening is in fact now impossible because uh, to recognize that something is qualified as genocide could declare that it's not tolerable from the point of view of the compliance of the international community, which the duty or the convention that have been declared, and everything is postponed so that uh, even the qualification of what is happening, not simply the prevention, is left out of the possibility of judging and taking the consequences. Now, in that sense, uh, the uh, qualification of the uh, Permanent People Tribunal, which was never contested from the point of view uh, of the gravity of the facts, uh, was uh, claiming for the community to take a very timely intervention in the terms of taking the responsibility of uh, blocking what was going on. Now, international law is mainly interested in looking after also international criminal court. They are judging something which was happening, has been happening with the same attitude of the Nuremberg Tribunal. Something was happening, those who had the power were judging, but in fact, uh, the real people were left alone and the uh, ongoing genocide is becoming, as it was declared, a real genocide with nobody having responsibility. And even those, uh, as the government of Myanmar recognized as responsible for all what was happening, is in fact out of the judgment, nobody is taking any provision. And the point of view which we are now facing is what to do with something which is formally very well documented. The tribunal examined very carefully, also from the classical point of view on international law, the qualification of genocide. There is a full compliance with all the qualification of genocide. First of all, with the fact of the denial of an identity of the Rohingya people and of the other minorities, because the identity the denial of the identity is, in fact, the first uh, documentation of the real intention and then the implementation if nobody is stopping. Now, the problem which uh, we have to do now is to see how to base uh, uh, the uh, decision or the pressure to put in international or not simply to battle against the formal, not formal definition which is there, which cannot be contested from the point of view of existing international law. We have to restitute to the people who are being the object of genocide their right to, to really speak for themselves, not simply to expect from outside a new judgment, because that will be simply a repetition and a further delay in the respect of what is happening. That is something which is of interest, not simply for the Rohingyas and for possibly Kachin and other Muslim minority to have their right recognized, but to justify the legitimacy of the international law because that is an attack of the full credibility of the international order of the community because if we are not able as international community of states to face really the challenge of changing the approach and the independence of international law, it means that those 
facts uh, are bound to be repeated, not simply with the fact of dictatorships, uh, as could be the military, but also for other situations which are, in fact, uh, happening around the world. Sorry for the shortness of the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, so, calling now upon uh, the second speaker, uh, who is, uh, um, I've lost my place, Penny Green.